dear friends welcome to this edition of vbs anatoma a series of e learning lectures these are basically gross anatomy videos i have taken the topic gross anatomy of the mouth the series of lectures is called the lockdown lectures or study from home videos because right now we are going through this corona pandemic there are no classes running all my students are in the at home and we are conducting this digital classes uh, i hope these lectures contribute at least to some part of your theoretical knowledge we hope to see you the students back as early as possible so that the corresponding practicals can be arranged i am dr bala subramanyam i work as a professor in the department of anatomy st john's medical college bangalore india let's start with image based mcqs mcq number 1 identify the pointed structure there is a flashing yellow arrow it's pointing to a particular structure by the way this is a dissection of the face all the muscles vessels nerves and glands have been neatly dissected and demonstrated there are a set of uh, choices uh, identify the pointed structure next here is a photograph of a person holding a electric tooth brush the tip of the tooth brush is in a particular location identify that location there are choices think over and give your answer the tip of the tooth brush is located where mcq number 3 there there is a particular uh, mucosal area being pointed out inside the mouth what epithelium is that area covered with here are the choices think over and give your answer we will discuss all the answers at the end of the video after the discussion here is mcq number 4 here is an mri coronal section uh you can see the nasal cavity nasal septum and the oral cavity details there is a particular structure being pointed out by that yellow flashing arrow what is that identify there are four choices the last mcq is a specimen from the dissection hall it's a coronal sorry it's a sagittal section roughly a mid sagittal section passing through the oral cavity a particular area has been identified has been pointed out in the by the flashing arrow identify what muscle is that i repeat what muscle is that now let's go to the discussion um now let's identify some of the external features in the region of the mouth cavity now that is a very important landmark that's called the naso labial furrow because that helps to identify the cheek that is behind the furrow and the lip which is the area in front of the furrow it's very important landmark next let's go into the mouth cavity again the lips and the cheek have been shown now that's the alveolar arch the 
maxillary component of the arch is shown right below right below that is the um, corresponding arch of the mandible now outer to the alveolar arch outer to the gingiva and inner to the cheek there is a cavity this cavity is exposed to the anterior in an open mouth but it's a, a completely closed uh, when the mouth is when the lips are ap approximated to each other now that cavity is the vestibule i repeat that's the vestibule now for completion purposes tongue is very obvious floor of the mouth and laterally the cheek the same the skin of which we saw in a previous slide now the inner aspect has a mucus lining stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium now you see here is a person with an electric toothbrush the tip of the toothbrush is actually in the vestibule he has moved the upper lip a little and you can see very clearly the location of the um, brush this is therefore the vestibule is best shown when the toothbrush is placed here or any object is placed here the lips and cheeks are pushed outwards next having introduced the vestibule and the alveolar arch it's time to identify the oral cavity proper obviously the region interior to the alveolar arch is the oral cavity proper of which the tongue is the floor and we will show you it in the next few slides the roof is the hard palate now the oral cavity proper mouth cavity proper and the vestibule are in communication with each other behind the third molar tooth repeat that's behind the third molar tooth this also is an important surgical uh, point we'll go into it a little detail now here is uh, the hard palate uh, forming the roof of the mouth cavity next connecting the lips to the gingiva similarly connecting the tongue to the lower gingiva there are some important folds of mucous membrane in the midline along the sagittal plane there is a frenulum of the upper lip superior labial uh, frenulum labio gingival frenulum now here the tongue is connected to the um, gingival area you can see the frenulum linguae i repeat that's the frenulum linguae lingual frenulum now this is a very good diagram which gives you a, a snapshot view of the entire oral cavity along with the vestibule and the alveolar arch now we see that's the upper labial frenulum lower labial frenulum corresponding to the lower lip inlet to the pharynx now we see posteriorly the mouth cavity is in continuity with the oropharynx but the plane of separation is marked by an arch that's the inlet to the pharynx that arch is also the palatoglossal arch the core of which contains the palatoglossus muscle and immediately behind that arch is the tonsils on either sides i'm not going into the details of oropharynx because this class is on the mouth cavity nevertheless these are all important uh, immediately uh, visible structures now you see what i have done is i have given a pink color to the vestibule see all the area outer to the alveolar arch both the maxillary and the mandibular uh, alveolar arch and inner to the cheeks and the lips is the vestibule i repeat marked in pink in this photograph is the vestibule and of course that uh, arched arrow is the area of continuity between the vestibule and the 
oral cavity. Next, I told you that area of continuity immediately behind the third molar is important because it's a spot where a regional anesthetic like lignocaine can be given using a sterile syringe. Lignocaine can be injected into that region because right outer to that area is the inferior alveolar nerve as it enters the uh, foramen, mandibular foramen. In close vicinity, maybe a little below that is the lingual nerve. Basically, the inferior, inferior alveolar nerve block is required for any dental procedure on the lower jaw. Incidentally, the adjacent lingual nerve also gets uh, the anesthetic dose. As a result, there will be some amount of numbness of the tongue. That's incidental. In fact, numbness of the tongue is used as uh, a, a clear indication that sufficient anesthesia uh, has been achieved. Let's take a break. Along with this video, we have uh, a few other videos on YouTube related to anatomy under the same banner, VBS Anatoma. We have a series of neuroanatomy lectures called VBS Neuromed. Another series called VBS Osteomed Osteology. And a third one, Histology videos called the VBS Histomed. Let's come back to the exterior. Here, the angle of the mouth has been identified and shown. That's the spot where the upper lip and the lower lip are in continuity with each other. Next, right in the midline sagittal, right below the nose, uh, is, a, is a groove on the skin, a, a shallow groove. Uh, that's the philtrum. It's an indentation in the skin, it's an important landmark right in the upper lip. Next, connecting the skin with the mucous membrane on the inner aspect is a transitional zone called the vermilion border. Now that border is, is generally red in color. Uh, there are certain special characteristics of this region. Uh, the vermilion region. These are the lining is a stratified squamous keratinized epithelium. First thing it's keratinized unlike the inner mucosa which is not keratinized. Stratified but not keratinized. But here it is this one the uh, vermilion border lining epithelium is stratified squamous keratinized epithelium similar to skin. However there is rich blood capillary loops in the papillae deep to the uh, epidermis. As a result, it looks really uh, fiery red. But more importantly, it has no sweat glands, no mucus glands, no sebaceous glands or hair follicles. Therefore, in spite of this amount of redness, and it's relatively dry. Uh, in fact, the tongue uh, is used to moisturize the lips uh, now and then. That's the way it keeps the uh, this area moist. Next, let's take a coronal section, MRI coronal section through the mouth cavity. Very obvious, the large tongue in the central region. The hard palate, you can see the arch there. The bony hard palate is visible above it. Next, upper and lower alveolar arch with teeth. Note the white color. Upper and lower alveolar arch, that is the sockets with teeth. Next, that's the masseter muscle, large muscle. That means the, the section is fairly back. Next, that is the cavity outer to the teeth and that is the vestibule. Similarly, the vestibule or the corresponding to the region inner to the upper cheek is also shown here. Next, the lingo-gingival sulcus has been shown. That's uh, the sulcus. Is, there is a, a bottoming the sulcus is a fold of mucous membrane running from the 
tongue to the uh, gingiva of the lower jaw. Next, there is a fold of mucous membrane connecting the lips bar uh, cheeks to the gingiva that is the labio gingival fold. It is outer to the alveolar arch. Likewise, there is another fold that is the lingo gingival fold inner to the alveolar arch where this fold uh, bottoms the uh, mouth cavity below the tongue. It connects the tongue with the gingiva. Now, the lining mucosa has already been told in a previous slide, but to reinforce is stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium. However, a word of caution here and there, see, it not, may not be this mucosa, here and there, where uh, there is opposition of mucus surface or uh, the food particles come in contact with any mucous surface that means there will be patches in the mouth cavity walls uh, where there is a uh, interaction between the food particle and the mucosal lining in such cases there is what is known as para keratinization para keratinization that's specific spots patches next the area that we call this cheek is behind the nasolabial furrow as shown in one of the previous photographs but the posterior limit is the anterior border of the masseter muscle now that area is actually the cheek you are seeing it in the dissection some of the important items that are noticed in the cheek are the parotid duct i repeat that's the parotid duct you can see the buccal branches of the facial nerve in the immediate vicinity of the parotid duct. Next, the parotid duct, I, I have shown a um, yellow arrow on the top. There is another inset photo. On that photograph, I have shown a yellow arrow. At the tip of the arrow, there is a white spot. That's roughly the spot where the parotid duct opens into the vestibule of the mouth. Uh, it's roughly opposite to the um, second molar tooth, roughly opposite to the second molar. It opens into the vestibule uh, of the uh, mouth. Next, facial artery and its branches also course through this area of the cheek. That means the cheek is like a sandwich. It has an outer skin, inner mucosa, and in between the buccinator muscle and vessels and nerves. Now you see a small part of the zygomaticus major muscle is also considered a part of the cheek external to the buccinator. Now that is the buccinator muscle. It runs from the mandibular region to the maxillary area. Posteriorly the buccinator ends in the buccopharyngeal raphae and beyond which the superior constrictor muscle uh, commences. In fact, this is a point of that's a line of intersection between the posterior border of the buccinator and the anterior border of the superior uh, pharyngeus muscle. That's called the buccal. That is called the uh, raphe. Next, in addition, the area in front of the nasolabial furrow, that is the region of the lips and uh, on the uh, the region of the lips you can see the platysma and rhizoris but small parts of it also go into the cheek as the platysma rises up and comes forward to the uh, angle of the mouth cavity now that is the core of the lip formed by orbicularis oris muscle now that's the parotid gland from the anterior border of which we saw earlier the parotid duct emerging. That's the masseter muscle to complete the discussion. Basically, it's not only the parotid, of course, the parotid empties into the vestibule, but the two other glands are sublingual and submandibular. They empty um, uh, into the uh, mouth cavity below the tongue on either sides of the frenulum, particularly the mandibular duct opening is there on either sides of the lingual frenulum. 
here is a cross section a sagittal section of uh, the head and neck region you can you can see the it has passed through the mouth cavity separating the mouth cavity from the nasal cavity is the hard palate above the hard palate you can see the nasal septum uh, below the hard palate you can see the tongue forming the floor of the nasal cavity in front of the hard palate you can see the upper lip and in front of the tongue you can see the cut section of the mandible and further in front of it you can see the lower lip now watch carefully that there is an arch that separates roughly is a plane of uh, demarcation between the oral cavity and the oropharynx oropharynx is the posterior continuation of the oral cavity it is a uh, bordered laterally by the palatoglossal arch next the pit which we has been labeled here as fornix vestibuli is basically the gap between the alveolar arch and the lower lip you remember we have discussed the same pit in another context in the one of the previous slides dorsum of the tongue has been very clearly shown floor of the mouth cavity that's the lower lip and when you look at the hard palate carefully posteriorly the uvula is attached to the posterior aspect it has a mucous membrane below and above and that projecting part into the uh, pharynx is the uvula the core of the lip upper lip as well as the lower lip is the muscle orbicularis oris i repeat muscle orbicularis oris now that's the skin external to it and the mucous membrane internal to it now it's time we had a second look at the mcqs because it's time for answers mcq number one that was the parotid duct that was the parotid duct item b mcq number two the brush toothbrush is located in the vestibule of the mouth three mcq number three the lining epithelium as repeated many times in the discussion is a stratified squamous non-keratinized epithelium mcq number four that's the hard palate that's the hard palate mcq number five the core of the uh, lower lip contains the orbicularis oris muscle now that was a discussion on the mouth cavity introductory concepts relating to mouth cavity there will be more videos where each component will be discussed in more detail for example one on the palate one exclusively on the tongue etc and one on the salivary glands etc but this is only a brief overview of the structures in the mouth cavity i hope you have benefited from the lecture if there are any points feedback would you like to give this is my email id you could also pen your feedback on the blog area below the youtube video thank you uh, my dear friends um, i hope to see my students back in the practicals as early as possible thank you best wishes